Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spinning Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. Sorry, I've been away for a while. Obviously, you guys know I haven't been feeling well, so I've just been uploading stuff that I already pre recorded and video game streams and all that stuff. Uh, but I did manage to get in a, a Transformer episode yesterday, which was great. And then also the Jeff Johns, you know, information for the Justice League stuff or Green Lantern Corps movie and stuff. So if you haven't checked those out, please do, because I'm going to do series on both Bumblebee and, you know, covering Transformer stuff. And I'll be doing stuff leading up to the Green Lantern Corps movie. Uh, but for today, we are obviously talking about venom that's the main show on this channel and we actually have some movie news some of it i actually wasn't going to talk about this because you guys know since i've started the show i think we've talked about the spider-man you know cameo rumor probably like five or six times now in different videos and i'm honestly just getting over it uh and again we have some comments here so i'm just gonna just touch on them a little bit and why you know these responses kind of irk me on some level um obviously reuben fleischer did kind of basically say uh, no, Spider-Man's not in my movie, but what we do in the future, like what they do in the future, who knows? Because who knows if he's going to be involved? Who knows what kind of movies they're going to spawn from this? If, the, if this movie is successful, who knows where they're going to go from here? You know, they don't have like a full long-term plan. They're still kind of making it up as they go. Uh, so he does kind of give an answer to kind of put that at rest. Like, hey, look, this is Venom's movie as far as I'm concerned, but what we do later, you know, that's still up in the air. So he did give that answer, which is fine. I just wish he was more direct with it. And this is what kind of irks me about the Sony people is that anytime you go and ask a Marvel person, Kevin Feige or the Russo brothers or anything, hey, is Venom a part of the MCU? They just go, no, no, he's not. But if you ask anyone at Sony, they go, oh, well, this is another link in the chain, which was Ruben Fleischer's first comment that he made way back at the uh, Brazil Expo when they showed off, um, you know, like a little thing there and they gave everyone Venom shirts. Um, and then they also, like, you know, when Amy Pascal was asked, you know, she was, you know, right next to uh, Kevin Feige, too. She was just like, yeah, it's all part of the big same thing, Marvel in general, you know, whatever. And everyone, it's just, it's just so confusing. These people just need to just say directly what's going on. And the reason they don't, I feel, is because they don't want to be direct. The reason they don't want to be direct is because they, they don't know still. They could probably still squeeze in a Tom Holland cameo if they want to. Um, you know, they could do whatever they want. Uh, or they could, you know, uh, or they just want people to not hate on this movie immediately. They know that, every, you know, especially after Ghostbusters, how much hate they got for remaking Ghostbusters, I think they're worried that this movie could get a ton of hate from people who don't want to see a Venom movie outside of the MCU which there are a lot of people out there who don't want that. Uh, so uh, they're, I think they're just trying to be like, hey, don't give a super direct answer. Give them hope. Give them hope that this may one day, you know, matter to the MCU because, uh, you know, we're still working things out um, and we still don't know what the future holds. So I think they are purposely being coy. And what's frustrating about that is because then we have to have these conversations every like 20 or 30 videos of mine about whether Spider-Man's actually in this movie or not. So when Ruben Fleischer says, this feels very much like Venom's movie, he should have just said, no, Spider-Man's not in this movie. Venom is in this movie, and this is Venom's movie. Not this feels like Venom's movie. That makes me wonder what kind of director is you know he is. Does someone come up to him and say, "Hey, what's my motivation in the scene?" Is he going to go, "Well, I feel like you should do this with the scene, or do this with the scene?" You know, as a director, you go, "Well, this is what's going on. Your character just went through hell. In the last scene, this happened to them. So they're strung out. They're tired. They haven't slept, and they're you know they're annoyed. And if anyone asks them a question, they're going to you know like snap at them. Like you, you have to have a vision. You have to be direct." You have to tell people what you want. And if they, you know, especially with an actor on set, if they say, oh, well, this is my interpretation of it, you can go back and forth there. But if they come up to you and say, what's the scene? What do I got to do? You have to have direct answers, not, well, this feels like what you should do. So when they answer questions like this, I'm like, don't just say it feels like Venom Story. Say it is Venom Story. That way there's no wiggle room there. Uh, so it seems like every time they answer, they give that wiggle room so people out there can still hold on to hope that Spider-Man may be in this universe, um, which is fine. Maybe one day he will be, like I said, maybe they'll just get the Venom story out of the way. They'll tell a Carnage story later on. And then maybe after Tom Holland's contract with Marvel ends, they can bring him into this world and they could just say it's a drifting continuity that doesn't really matter. Venom's never going to meet Iron Man, but at least he can meet this version of Spider-Man. Who knows? It doesn't matter because none of that is relevant right now. That's down the road right now it's a Venom movie and it's about Venom. Um, and I know it's hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around the idea of a Venom story without Spider-Man because they think, you know, they're like, oh, well, his powers are tied to Spider-Man or his, you know, his backstory is tied to Spider-Man. Yes, in the comics, that is very true. And in a lot of the interpretations from like, you know, the, the, the cartoons and stuff like that uh, and video games even, yes, in most cases, 
uh, it's Venom is a direct, you know, creation in a way of, you know, being rejected by Spider-Man. And he does inherit powers and memories of Spider-Man and gives those to Eddie Brock. So yes, 100%, that is most cases, like 90% of the time. But there is a 10% of the time where you can, you know, and this being the first time in movies, obviously, where you can tell a Venom story without Spider-Man. Can it be done successfully? We don't know. Time will tell. This movie will be the judge of that. But at least leading up to it, I'm okay personally, obviously, um, you know, otherwise I wouldn't really do this show as, you know, as much as I do. Uh, but I think I I'm, I'm interested. As a Venom fan, I am intrigued by the concept of a Venom story without Spider-Man. Whether it'll work or not, I have no idea. I haven't, like, you know, made up my mind before seeing the movie. I'm just excited. I think uh, it's an intriguing concept. And I think it can be done because, like I've always said, the things that make Eddie Brock truly are, uh, or his mode for his motivation, is he just needs someone to, you know, maybe torture the suit in some way or hurt the suit in some way, and then someone to ruin his life. And the Life Foundation can do both of that. Dr. Carl Tim Drake could capture the symbiote, you know, from the spacecraft, torture it, you know, run tests on it in a lab, piss it off, and then ruin Eddie Brock's life because of that interview we saw he give in the trailer. And they could both have a common enemy. So when they merge, they decide to go after Carlton Drake together. That's really all Venom needs as motivation for a character. He doesn't need Spider-Man from a motivational standpoint to tell his story. Uh, he just needs something to hate. And yeah, his powers are probably going to be different. He probably won't web swing around. It looks like he's going to be a big giant monster creature thing. So he could just jump around like he did in the Ultimate Spider-Man video game. Um, so And even in that game, he didn't fully have Spider-Man's powers. He still jumped around like the Hulk you know, in the Hulk video game, and he would just jump and leave craters anywhere he landed. So to me, you know, I don't think you need Spider-Man, we said this many times on the show, to tell a Venom story if you're just looking at Venom as, like, the base character of who he is and what motivates him. Obviously, it would be, you know, for fans, would love to see Spider-Man and Venom interact. Uh, but for me, as a Venom fan, I don't need to see that. I've seen that story a hundred times. Uh, we get it 90% of the time. We have it in the comics, the cartoons, the other movie. Uh, so we have all those versions. I want to see something different, and I'm hoping this movie delivers on not just different, but good and different. Uh, but then he also went on to say, Ruben Fleischer said, among, among many influences, he did men mention John Carpenter and David Cronenberg, and even American Werewolf in Paris, or a Werewolf, um, American Werewolf in London. Sorry, not Paris, although that's, I like that movie too, but American Werewolf in London. So I'm hoping we'll get some cool transformation scenes by, you know, David Cronenberg. We have The Fly had a great, you know, scene series of transformation scenes of Jeff Goldblum turning into The Fly, and then obviously American Werewolf in London. That's a great one too, because that's one of the greatest werewolf transformations ever on film and it was a lot of it was all practical effects so hopefully we get some practical things in this movie although i've heard that it's mostly going to be cgi and they tried practical things on set and they didn't really work out so well so hopefully the cgi is up to par and it looks really good but again I'm excited for this, uh, you know, and it, it's these comments just irk me on a little level, but ultimately he did finally say, no, this is kind of Venom's movie and, and there's no Spider-Man here, but maybe one day. And I'm glad because I'm honestly <laughs> getting getting tired of having that conversation um, with everybody. But I know a lot of people out there do want Spider-Man. So if you do, let me know uh, down below why you want Spider-Man so badly why you think you can't tell a Venom story without Spider-Man. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And those of you who are excited for this, you know, let me know your excitement down below as well. So as always, guys, thanks for watching my show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.